Hello, everybody. How's Comic-Con doing? All right, we got a busy program, so we're going to jump right into it. There's no time to mess around. My name is Jeff Boucher. I write for the LA Times. I have a website called HeroComplex.com. Thanks. Uh, please go. Just, just keep clicking. Just keep clicking. Uh, we are here, and we are here to talk about legendary pictures, legendary films, and I am joined by two gentlemen. Uh, this is John Jashney. John Jashney, Jashney is the chief creative officer of Legendary Entertainment, and he has a fan club right there. And then Thomas Tull, who is the chairman and CEO of Legendary Entertainment. Now, guys, uh, this, is a, this is a fun day for you, and I know that uh, everything that you guys do is informed by Comic-Con culture, by Comic-Con, Planet Comic-Con. Uh, and you are here to tell us a little bit about Legendary and, and the future, and, and a little bit... First, tell us a little bit about how you guys got here with Legendary. Well, um, I started the company in 2003. I've been coming here to Comic-Con as a fan for a very long time. Uh, it's still shocking to me that uh, we're allowed to make movies. And for uh, those of you in the audience, because I sat right where you are, making movies with Zack Snyder and Chris Nolan and Todd Phillips and Guillermo del Toro is just as cool as I thought it would be, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so, you know, it's a privilege to be here, and it's, uh, we're given an early look on some of these things, so we just wanted to have a small, intimate gathering, although <laughs> this isn't as intimate as I was told, but this is cool. <laughs> and, you know, look, there's a lot of great stuff that goes on at Comic-Con. There's a lot of things that compete for your time, so we're grateful that you're here to share some stuff with us. You know, John, one of the things that uh, Comic-Con's all about and, and, and the sector of films that you guys have had the, your biggest successes in is that passion becomes profession. These, and no one gets into this unless they love it. And that, that fits your, your trajectory as well, doesn't it? It does for sure. Like, you know, I'd be sitting there if I wasn't sitting here, and thank God I'm sitting here, and I'm sitting here thanks to him. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, let's get right into it. Are we going to... Uh, we're going to bring out... Uh, the folks from Pacific Rim. Yep. So, this is a movie we're very excited about. And they are. The only other thing, Jeff, I wanted to say is at the end, because we so appreciate the fact that you're here, you got a redemption tag or a ticket or something. So, we have uh, some cool stuff for you at the beginning for everybody. So, actually, yeah, absolutely. And another thing, too, is that we're going to take questions from you guys for all the people up here. Uh, and if you want to tweet your questions, uh, it's at Legendary News. And then the other thing is that we should mention that you guys have a, such a great long history with Warner Brothers as well. Yeah, and, and they're of course, a terrific partner. A lot of the, uh, that partnership is going to be on display here today. So, but let's get into it. Uh, we have some people here who want to say hello. One of them is Guillermo del Toro. We also have Idris Elba. We have Charlie Hoonan. Charlie Hoonan. We have uh, Charlie Day. Just going up, stay standing. Yep, just going up. Hey guys. Hello, Pacific Rim. Hola. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Hola, cabrón. <laughs> so. And Travis Beecham. Travis Beecham. <laughs> it's only hunks from here on. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't get through without an F-bomb, so let's just get it done right, right? Let's get it out of the way. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Pacific Rim, Guillermo. Well, uh, the first thing I want to say is, well, that's a logo for you. We're going to talk about it. I wanted you to get introduced to the cast and also to the philosophy behind the movie and, and what a miracle it is for me. You know, uh, let me speak, start by talking about Legendary briefly. Only because I'm barren, otherwise I would bear Legendary's child. You know, I really, finding a company that has the energy, the vision, and the balls to make movies the way we want to make them. You know, and, and part, <laughs> thank you, applaud the balls, always applaud the balls. <laughs> you know, I think, <laughs> and, and, um, and the, it starts with the cast. You know, there are two, two um, ways to cast a movie. One is 
to make the comps and do the names and go through that, and that is mostly bullshit, you know? <laughs> the other one is to say, who are the perfect fucking actors for the role? You know, and, 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 and to make a movie of this size, of this scope, and be able to cast it with the greatest fucking actors for the role <laughs> is a dream come true for me. I, we, I think that everybody on this side is a, is a star. And I, I'm a huge fan, and there's, uh, you know, more cast to come to be announced very soon. Uh, Rinko Kikuchi from Babel couldn't be here, but she plays the female lead. And uh, these are all guys I admire. Absolutely, I'm a huge fan of them. So we cast it together with Legendary with that in mind, as fans, because in Legendary, we are all fans. How do we want to cast this movie? And we went for the, for the dream cast, and we got it, you know? Now, there are a piece of important cast that cannot be here mainly because they don't fucking fit, is the monsters and the robots. <laughs> now, as Mozart would say in Amadeus, it is my duty to commit to film the finest fucking monsters ever committed to the screen. <laughs> and the second is I, I make the pledge to commit the greatest fucking robots ever committed to screen. <laughs> that's, so, you know, that, that's, that's a pledge. And uh, the, the idea, the movie started uh, about a year ago. You know, a year ago I came in originally as producer and to help develop based on uh, a few pages that had been uh, started as a pitch by Travis Beecham, who is one of my favorite writers working today. He wrote uh, a, a fantastic movie, Carnival Row, that we never could get made, but if you can pirate in a pirate way, get it from the internet, get it. It's called A Killing in Carnival Row. Fantastic screenplay. And, uh, and we met then. Back then he had no car and I was his chauffeur. And I was driving him around, but he's a great idea, man. And I read this, this um, pitch and I immediately went to Legendary and said, I want to be part of it. As we started developing the screenplay and the, and, the, and the pitch into a more elaborate thing, I became jealous of whoever the asshole was going to be that was going to direct it. So I grew completely despondent and fortunately, something tragic happened, which was Mountains of Madness went away, but something beautiful happened two days later, which is I said, I know who should direct this. <laughs> so here we are. I would love to, to let you uh, uh, meet the cast, so I give the microphone to the first, the fucking man, Idris Elba. <laughs> Hey guys, um, listen, hi, hi, hi. I'm so honestly honored and excited to be here. Stringer uh, Bell, motherfucker! <laughs> Stringer's uh, dead, just FYI. Um, <laughs> but Legendary, you know, like I'm a big fan of Legendary and also Glero, and it's great to have a director who, who celebrates his imagination in the way he does. He's great with actors, great with film, and so I'm just honored and thankful for being here, pal. Charlie Hunnam, ladies and gentlemen. The other fucking man. Hey, how are ya? Like, get your... <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, I think that uh, from um, working with Ron Perlman, one of Guillermo's other favorite thespians, I was fortunate enough that Guillermo started uh, watching a show, and as he was thinking about this, uh, this film, he thought maybe I would be the man for the job, so... I'm just very, very happy to be here and very excited to be working with this man. And we met, we met we've been, we've been uh, circling each other for a while. We've been very close to working together. And you know, we, we, every time we, we've been uh, talking about projects, we bow that the next one is going to happen. Unfortunately for me, this one is. Yeah. So the, the next is Choily, Choily Day, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Hey, all right. Uh, I, don't, I don't really have a fancy accent, but um, I promise to work on one by the time we do this movie. Uh, you know, there's nothing to say at this point other than I'm really excited to be here, and, uh, and uh, I think this is going to be an awesome movie. Hey, where'd you get your hat from, bro? I like it. We uh, shop at the same hat place, too. So. <laughs> 
No, we, we, I'm, a, I'm a devoted fan of uh, Sonny in Philadelphia. You know, I think... I, I think... Uh, is, is the meanest, most delightful group of people <laughs> ever put on screen in any format. And uh, what, I, what I asked Charlie as a favor, I said, well, you know, you'll be casting this movie if you allow me to play the fat wino in the corner of the bar in one of the episodes. <laughs> so fortunately, he agreed. <laughs> but I was, I was, people asked me, when, when did you realize, uh, you know, he was great for the character? And it was in this last season uh, he has a wonderful monologue, and I think the episode I think is called Charlie King of the Rats, you know, and, and he comes out from the cellar after killing the rats, and he has this grizzled Vietnam vet little speech about killing rats, and I went, that's the guy. <laughs> so, you know, we're very fortunate to have him. Uh, last but not the least, Travis Beecham. I think a few years ago, I, I sort of realized that my favorite movie that I, that I could ever dream of had not been made. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's sort of how the ball got rolling for me. And I look at all these people here, and, and I, I just I feel like it is getting made. And it's going to be my favorite movie, and I hope it's going to be yours, too. You know, Guillermo, it's early days, but what can you tell us? I mean, so much of this movie's been sort of cloaked. Is there anything you can tell us today? That would well, I think that out? the first thing that, uh, the simplest thing that can be said is really, really succinct and is giant fucking monsters against giant fucking robots. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, one of, the, one of the things I love is the Dai Kaiju, the, the genre, you know, the kaijus that were created uh, um, to, to do two things that fascinate us, which is have incredibly huge things destroy little things, <laughs> first of all. But second of that, to be, abs to, to be absolutely honest, the concept, which is the part we cannot divulge, that Travis came up with mm -hmm. originally, uh, made it click with me. It's something we need to keep sort of in secrecy, okay. but uh, there's much more than that. I mean, the, the first attractor is that, but the second is the characters are great, and the conceit of the story, the revelations of where these things come from and what do they want and why, you know, what we, we started by saying, agreeing on one thing, we want to make it a big what if. What would happen in the real world if a 25 story high thing came out and started destroying cities? What would really happen? You know, how would the society change? First thing that happens, they come out of the sea, so beachfront property would go down. <laughs> no, but, uh, and really, you start saying, how would the world change? What weapons do we need to develop to fight a thing like that? But we always agreed from the beginning, we wanted to keep it grounded. We didn't want a fantastical story happening in a fantastic and distant future to which we have no relationship. We wanted to make it the, almost the now mm -hmm. and say this is what would happen to our world. You know, I, I really think every, everything that we are as fans and as geeks and as just curious minds, we ask ourselves about giant monsters and kaijus, I wanted to try and answer in the movie. Biologically, biological functions, uh, customs, where they come from, all these things, are, are, we created a whole world around that one single gigantic variable. So I think uh, that's what I can promise. This will not be just a movie that will have spectacle and scope, although everything in the movie is about scale. Everything in the movie is about scale. Uh, but it's beautiful how it posits a very delicate little human scale problem and conflicts against a gigantic scope scale situation. So, I mean, I'm sorry to sound that ambiguous and haiku-ish, but, you know, <laughs> that's what we can say today. Well, it sounds exciting, and uh, if, if that's a haiku, I can't wait to see, <laughs> I can't wait to see how it ends. Uh, believe it or not, we have to keep moving on. They tell me it's time to bring out the next movie, but, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Pacific Rim. Thank success. you. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, we are moving on. Uh, next, we have a movie called Seventh Son, and we have some very nice people here and we're gonna bring out. Uh, first one is an Oscar winner named Jeff Bridges. <laughs> We're also bringing out Ben Barnes, <laughs> Sergey Bodrov, and Alicia Vikander. Fantastic, it's nice to see you guys here. Um, Sergey, could you tell me, you know, anytime you start a film, I would imagine one of the first fundamental questions you have to answer is tone. Uh, what can you tell us about the tone of this film? No, no, it's, first of all, I want to say that I'm very happy to be here and with such wonderful people with my cast. And uh, um, we just we want to make something very special, very cool. And it will be dark tone, but it's also movie with a kind of clear and interesting message. Yeah, I don't know. Fantastic. And then, Jeff, it's nice to see you again. Good to see you. Uh -huh. Hi there, you guys. <laughs> you know, uh, there are so many projects that come to you, and I know that uh, you always kind of resist taking any of them. Uh, it's the ones that survive. Yes. <laughs> the ones that survive your patience are the ones you take. Why did you take this film? Well, this one, I tried to push it away like I do all of, all of them, but uh, there's something grabbed me about it. You know, the uh, wonderful story, uh, something quite unusual. I always have a hard time at these things telling, telling too much about it because uh, I don't want to spoil any of it. You know, when I go to movies, I like to be surprised. And that's one of the things I liked about this project, that it uh, takes a lot of twists and turns that you're not expecting, which I don't want to talk about. But um, also, uh, when I saw, uh, I said, well, who's going to direct this thing? This is going to be pretty challenging for the director. And I saw Sergei's uh, uh, films. I saw um, Mongol. I don't know if you guys saw yeah. that, but I was impressed with that. And a wonderful film called Prisoner of the Mountain. Is it mountains or yeah. mount, mountain? Mm -hmm. One, singular, yeah. That was really great, man. That really knocked me out. And uh, I thought, oh, if he's at the helm, we got a good chance of making something really special. So that's, what, that's why I'm on board. And Ben, tell me, uh, you know, we, we look at these images that we're seeing up here and, you know. Which these... I've nev never seen before, <laughs> by the way, which is why I'm slightly it's... absorbed in this monitor. So <laughs> don't mind me if I'm just. <laughs> when you see that, you know, uh, Legendary has uh, a track record of bringing fantastic images to the screen, fantastic worlds. Uh, it must be interesting for you to see that and, and, and project what's going to be like to be part of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm as I say, a little flabbergasted because I haven't seen any of this before. <laughs> but um, I saw, I, you know, like Jeff, I saw um, Sergei's film, Mongol, and it's just such a beautifully shot and beautifully put together film. And I, I think sometimes, you know, you, you feel like you get a script about a, a, you know, a kind of witch hunter or a wizard or whatever, and they're apprentice, and you feel like you've seen it before. And I started reading this and thought, I've not, I haven't seen this one before. Because the characters are sort of slightly darker and more surly, and, mm. and, and the relationships are not as kind of, uh, don't come together as sort of fruitfully as you might, as you might hope. Sure. And, uh, and I just think it's going to look amazing, but um, Jeff Bridges is in it. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia, Jeff Bridges is in this. Uh, what's that like for you? Is that pretty exciting just to step into a, a movie like this, a project of this size? Well, this is so big for me. I mean, this is going to be my first American film, and sitting here with you guys and doing this film is just overwhelming. Um, but I'm so happy, and uh, I've also I admire all of Sergey's previous work, and I'm um, I I'm a huge fan of fantasy and horror books since I was a kid, so I really enjoy being in this film. And like you said, it's uh, I like that it's ha that it has this very you know slightly dark touch to it, and it's actually a very um, 
character-based film. Yeah. So, yeah. Sergey, tell us a little bit about the, the film, the story, if you can. I mean, we know it's a magical world, world and it's a world with messy <clears throat> situations as well. Of course, yeah, it's a, a lot, a lot. I think it's a, it's a, a great story it's based on the few books, British books, like uh, written for kids, but, but a little bit Harry Potterish territory, but we wanted to do something more edgy. More the dark, but basically it's a story about Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's an old witch hunter who is a la, la, who is hunting his old enemy, but he needs now new apprentice because all his apprentices before former they died. It's a dangerous job. Yes. <laughs> Great. So, but. but <laughs> But for me, it's also a story, and you know, and I have to tell, it was not so easy to get Jeff to make this movie. It took for me, yeah, I don't know, really. <laughs> <laughs> but because uh, Jeff, one of the best actors, and, and he wanted to have a story, a strong story, and he wanted to be look around it. And we just came up with, I think, with some interesting changes, but, uh, but but by the way, a lot of people ask me, okay, but how did you get the job? Did you smoke to him? Uh, I don't know, because it's a, it's a fact that Jeff is smoking, yeah, I don't know, and, uh, <laughs> and he's talking about this, it's a, not a secret. No, we a didn't smoke, vicious, we didn't smoke, but rumor. we will someday, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. So Jeff, um, you know you've made films uh, uh, that are visually, uh, with visual effects that are really intense. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for decades. I mean, King Kong, all, uh, movies like Fisher yeah. King, um, Fantastic Visions, recent years. Tr I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. That's the new one, the yeah, newest yeah. one. Uh, Iron Man, Tron, yeah. uh, things like that. Um, does that bring with it a particular set of challenges for you, just as far as craft? Do you find that you have to prepare yourself in a different way, or is it become just part of the, the overall process for you? Yeah, with, uh, with Tron, uh, the big challenge with that one, you know, uh, is that uh, well, I, it kind of rubbed against my acting fur, you know, because I like to have costumes and makeup and sets, and yeah. I, I work with the camera where the camera is, that's all important to me. But now, uh, with this new technology, you know, uh, the actors have dots all over their face and wear a helmet with a camera, and they do everything in post, from you know, makeup to the sets to camera angles. Everything is done in post. So I, my big challenge for me was not, uh, uh, you know, bitching about... Uh, <laughs> The fact that I didn't have my stuff, you know, my costumes, and kind of get with the program. That's, you know, and, and you, gotta, you can't waste time because, you know, movies are, you know, only have a finite uh, you know, number of uh, minutes there to, to do your thing. But uh, the technology is, is uh, you know, God, it's so, it's so fast. It's becoming passe. All of that Tron stuff, I was just talking to an actor out in the green room there. Uh, of a you know a, a, a special effect film he's making, and he says, "Oh yeah, the the camera that we're using isn't even hasn't been built yet," <laughs> and I'm sure that you know that on this one it's going to be the next generation. Now, so you got to get, you know, just get used to it. Now you can't get used to it. That's the thing because as soon as you get used to it, it's something else, you know. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> But it should be fun. I'm, I'm up for it. You know, watching these, uh, like Ben was saying, we're watching these things. Like you, you guys get to see. Oh, you see them over there, maybe? No, but we see all. They're showing us the, our sets and stuff, and that's very exciting. You know, that's that's part of the uh, the fun of doing uh, movies like this or any any movies is working with all these other artists. You know, yeah. it's a it's a, uh, a kind of a, uh, a collaborative art form, and you get the benefit of all these other great artists that you're working with. So I, I'm really looking forward to it. Should be terrific. Well, fantastic. Well, Seventh Son, we are going to wait and see. Uh, we have some time before we see this film, but it's great to see you guys today. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.